gathering this morning from all over the world. It's more dramatic if I play the organ while I have the greeting. <laughs> it's like really like church then, right? <laughs> this is like the, the camera's on, right? Okay, it's on. Good morning, everybody out there. <laughs> We're so excited to be here this morning with you to gather together and worship. Praise the Lord. Lift up the name of Jesus. We have the freedom to do that. It's an amazing, wonderful thing. Let's just gather this morning and uh, lift up our voices and sing praise to God. Amen. All right. Your love is like radiant diamond bursting inside us. We cannot contain your love has surely consumed us like blazing wildfire. Singing your name. Let's sing it again. Your love. Your love is like radiant diamonds bursting inside us. We cannot contain. Your love has surely consumed us. Like blazing wildfire, singing your name. God of mercy, sweet love of mine, I have surrendered to your desire. May our praise stretch across. Your love is like radiant diamonds bursting inside us. We cannot contain. Your love has surely consumed us like blazing wildfire. Singing your name, God of mercy, sweet love of mine, I have surrendered to your design. May I pray, stretch across. Ooh. 
multiply. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. separate us from your love because we are one with you. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing 
can separate us. Sing it again. Nothing can separate. Nothing can separate. Nothing can separate. Nothing can separate me from your love. Nothing can separate. Nothing can separate. Nothing can separate us. My life is hidden in the shadow of your wings. Yeah, that's off. Who's with me? <laughs> My life is hidden in the shadow of your wings. My life is hidden in the secret. Totally hidden. Woo! My life is hidden in the shadow of your wings. My life is hidden in the secret place in you. You are my life. You are my love. You are the only thing I've ever wanted. You call me out, set me aside, brought me into your righteousness. I've been in you. I've been in you for all time. You've always known me and always loved me. I died with you, now raised with you. No longer I, but Christ who lives within me. My life is hidden in the shadow of your wings. My life is hidden in the secret place in you. My life is hidden in the shadow of your wings. My life is hidden in the secret place in you. You are my life. You are my love. You are the only thing I've ever wanted. You call me out. that we are hidden in you. What a wonderful place to be. You are our hiding place. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. I will trust in you. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. I will trust in you. I will trust. Trust in you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. You are my hiding place. You are my hiding place. You always fill.
trust in you. I will trust.
And I will love for you have love I will forgive as you forgave Your love prevails You fill my life with hope again And I will love for you have love I will forgive as you forgave Your love prevails You fill my life with hope again And now my soul sings Your loving knows no end Your loving knows no end. Your loving knows no end. Oh, oh, and now my soul sings. Your loving knows no end. Your loving knows no end. Your loving knows no end. Thank you, Father. We just thank you for how much fun it is to live with you, to be one with you, to walk with you, to see through your eyes, your loving eyes, out to each other, out to this world. We just thank you, Father, for the joy that you bring us. Never-ending joy, ever-increasing joy. We just thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Welcome to Celebration City. A place where, thank you, where you hear this over and over and over again, how much the Father, the Father loves you, how much, how much you mean to Him and how, who exactly you are and what you are and what you can do. Um, we want to start being in the same uh, mind with the last song and the one before the last. And 
all five we sang today, seven, and tell the Father and remind ourselves through our words, speak this over our soul. Father, you love us so much. Father, your love for me is so deep. Your love is unchangeable, is unshakable, is unmovable. Regardless of what happens, your love remains. Your love cannot be departed from me. Your love is always there with me. Whatever I run, you are there. Wherever I go, you are there. Whatever happens, you are there. You never go away. Thank you for your love for the body of Christ. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness that never goes away from us. Every single morning it gets renewed. Your mercy gets renewed over and over again. Your love, your mercy, your goodness leads us to repentance. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and for your love for me and for us. Thank you for your love for the body of Christ. Your body is so precious. The body of Christ is so precious to you. Thank you so much for the body. Thank you for every single one of us in the body of Christ. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Exactly the love the Father has for you as for his own son. Not for a neighbor, not for a creation, but for his own son. You have the same love for us, the same quality of love, the same precious love for us. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you so much. Oh, yes. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Starting from this love, we can go on. Starting from this love, we don't let accusation and condemnation and anything to come against us. Starting from this love, being rooted and grounded in this love that is never moving and shaking from us, away from us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Nothing can separate us from your love. Nothing. No powers, no dominions, no nothing. No angels, no demons, no nothing. Thank you, Jesus. We are grounded in this love. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Amen. 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 Praise you, Father. <clears throat> um, yeah, welcome to Celebration City. <clears throat> we love the body of Christ. Because we love ourselves. We can love the body. If you don't love yourself, you cannot love anyone else. The way you treat somebody else is exactly how you treat yourself when you mess up. If someone does something wrong to you, what's wrong with you? you when you do something wrong, what's wrong with my head? Why am I so stupid? Blah, blah, blah. No, you are the body of Christ. You are precious, bone of his bones and flesh of his flesh. When you mess up, oh, this is dirt. You have no place in me. You go away from me. You belong to the cross. Whatever I've done, this is not who I am. When someone else does wrong to you, this is not who you are, brother. I know who you are. You are the body of Christ. You are me. You are me. We are one. The Father is in both of us. Is one with us. We are one. Spirit with the Lord. Thank you, Father. <clears throat> uh, we want to do another exercise. You know, you know, usually when you go to church, it's like uh, this guy in front does the whole thing, and you, you're with a notepad. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. This morning was bad. Oh, no, that was pretty good, brother. That was pretty good. We are, we are not those people. We are worse. No, just kidding. <laughs> we are better. <laughs> we are not those people because we are engaged into what the Lord is doing. It's all of us doing. It is not just one guy here and everybody is checking out. We are all one. You are speaking through me. When Val comes up or whoever comes up, you are speaking through the person who's there. That's oneness. If this hand is reaching towards this stand, all the muscles in my abdomen, in my every, in my legs, they get involved into the movement. It's not like everything is atrophied, atroph atrophied, and it's just this hand goes on its own. That's not how it works. It's the same thing with the body of Christ here. 
Someone comes here, it's you through that person. Now, when it gets really cool, when you get in sync on you will to get in sync, you set your will to get in sync with the person, then you feel the flow. That's really cool. Um, <clears throat> as I said, we want to do another exercise. And in this exercise, we want to push the sickness away from the body of Christ. <clears throat> Regardless of how many times you prayed, you spoke over a thing, you just don't give up. Amen. You take your hammer and you hit again. You take your hammer and you hit again. Like a thick wall right here. You take a hammer, you hit again. And it feels like it's not moving. Doesn't matter, you hit again. Even if it, if it was this thick and now you got this thick, and even the last hit, if it's like the first one, don't think it's the first one. It's not the first hit. Just a little bit more and it breaks. But just stay there and don't give up. That means you speak over and over and over again. You can meditate. Go away. It has no place on you. It belongs to the cross. It's in his stripes we are healed. Not in our stripes. So we don't carry those. We set them to the cross. The sickness, the disease, the infirmity has no place in us. You tell that demon, get out of here. It's not your place in here. We burn you away from here. Go to hell and burn. You have no place in us. Right? So let's, 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 let's speak and let's, let's go against the sickness and disease. Thank you, Father. We are the body of Christ. We live in perfect health, not in healing, healing, healing again. Perfect health, that means nothing by any means can hurt us. So we come against you, sickness and disease, and we send you to the cross. You have no place on us. You are dead. You are separated from us. We are separated from you. We have nothing to do with you. You are not our identity. So you be gone from us. We live in perfect health. We were healed in the stripe of Jesus. So we come against you and we burn you away from the body of Christ. Be gone from us. Every single pain, every single disease, every single infirmity, every single demon. How dare you stay here? It's enough. It's been enough. You be gone from the body of Christ. We burn you away. We destroy you. We shred you to pieces. We, we destroy you. Be gone from us. Go. Sickness, you go to the cross. You don't belong to us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We speak increase of the dominion of life in us. We speak to, the, to every seed of the word. Be quickened in our soul. Come to life in our soul. We live in faith. We are one with you. You work with all the seeds of the hope that are in our soul. You bring life to them. You bring them to life. You quicken them to life. And you grow abundantly. The life of Jesus grow abundantly in us. Dominion of life be increased in us. Oh, nothing of the devil has any place in us. Blood, we are cleansed by you. We are penetrated by you. We are dipped into you. We are one with you, blood of Christ. Thank you. We are being cleansed from any unrighteousness in our soul and in our bodies. Thank you, Jesus. Our bodies belong to you. The body is for the Lord. The Lord is for the body. Not for sickness and disease. Not, nothing of the devil has any place in our bodies but resurrection life. We are being quickened to life. Our bodies are being quickened to life. Not decaying, but going from glory to glory. Thank you, Jesus. I speak against sickness and disease. Be gone. Be gone and never come back to the body of Christ. We come against you, devil. You have no place in us. You have nothing to claim in us anymore. We are the body of Christ and we know it and we grow into it. So release this uh, consciousness and this awareness of who we really are. We release it into the body of Christ right now. We release the dominion of life, everything we've got, the life of Jesus that was increasing us, we release it into the body of Christ. Body of Christ, wake up. Eyes be open and see the truth and believe the truth. Body of Christ, we release all this life into the body of Christ right now. In one mind, one accord. Thank you, Father. We are life-giving spirits and we release this life into the body of Christ. We release this awareness that we do not have to see under dominion of sickness, under the dominion of, of infirmity anymore. 
we've been set free. We've been delivered. We've been healed. Thank you, Jesus. We release this life into the whole body of Christ. Awareness of who we really, really are. Awareness of who we are. We are sons of God. We are the body of Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I was praying towards the wall. It's like, wow, the body of Christ in the what the? It's like, whoa. Amen. Um, do you have any uh, testimonies this morning? Going once. Oh. So. So, about um, two years ago, I had had cataract surgery. One eye first, and then the other eye. And in August, I went, my birthday's in August, so I went down to the DMV, and you have to take the eye test. And um, the lady that tested me, she says, it's suitable for our purposes. She says, but you may want to go in and have your eyes checked. So when I had had my surgery before, I went to this certain doctor. And um, so I would make an appointment with her. And I ended up canceling it. There was not, there was a unsteadiness in me and I ended up canceling the appointment like three times. <laughs> and uh, at church one day, Paige, she said, Jamie, can I pray for you for anything? And I said, yes, my left eye, because it seemed like so she prayed, and I would call back the doctor and make an appointment with somebody new. And um, Dr. Doe came out into the, into the waiting room, which you never see a doctor do. Mm -hmm. And he, he greeted me, and you know, when he talked with me, and we went into, in, into the room. And he just explained everything to me. And when I was in the doctor before, she just goes through her things and takes pictures. And she took a lot of pictures of my eyes. So, I, um, so he would test my eyes. And I, I had told him what brought me there, the, going to the DMV. And he said, there is nothing here, Jamie. Wow. He said, your, 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 your eyesight is the same. There's been no change. And he said, so... Um, he, 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 when you had this cataract surgery, you're supposed to be doing this test on this grid. And he said, have you done that? I, and I said, no. I says, I, I got away from it. I said, but every time I would do it, you know, it was clear. Mm -hmm. And he said, you don't have to do that anymore, Jamie. Yes. And <laughs> I had wanted a new pair of glasses. And he would give me a prescription, mm -hmm. and it's good for two years, that I can get, you know, mm -hmm. updated glasses. <laughs> and, you know, that God, he just, he does, you know, abundantly above, yes. abundantly above. And, yes. and yes, we are one body. <laughs> and when, you know, and, and, and I've had other people in this body also. And... When, you know, and then I was explaining this to my sister, you know, and, she, you know, and they don't understand. And I said, I said, you know, I said, Julie, 
It was the hand of the Lord. And so, to God be the glory. Amen, amen. Dare to believe the impossible. If you can believe, all things are possible to the one who believes. Dare to believe the impossible. It doesn't matter how everybody in the world goes or does things. You believe the impossible and you stay on the promise. Don't go with the flow. Don't go with the flow. Good job, Jamie. Amen to that. Um, <clears throat> I had a... We started to... Actually, it's been a while. Sephora and I and other people, we, we are framing the, the work of our hands and everything we do. The business we do, the businesses we have and stuff. We frame the... But lately, we got really, really down on the, like, really serious with it. Like, we take the projects we are doing, and we frame those projects instead of, like, a general. Yeah, so we got really, like, to the nini, greeny, 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 nini. Yeah. <clears throat> so, because I would have a lot of, uh, the work of our hands was blessed. But the clients, we get met here and there, and then you explain stuff, and they go around. And in the end, they are really pleased. But in the process, like, mm, you're about to ch -ch -ch. So I, we started, it's been like maybe half a week or a week. We started like framing every single piece of work we're doing. Even if I'm paying a subcontractor or someone I'm paying, I bless the work of his hands, whatever project I gave him to do. It's not just whatever I physically touch. Whatever he touches, I touch through the guy I pay, right? So I told you Friday, I had a, a client, and that guy has five people in the board, and they always complain about everything. They are so picky. After I went through a designer, and I did maybe like 20, 30 versions of a logo, nobody was pleased. No, 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 change this, change that. Oh. I gave it to another designer, but this time I was, like, I was blessing the work of his hands, that specific logo, and I said, first time he goes through, and man, they were all, love it, OMG, really good, every single one of them. So now I had another project, and I gave it to the same guy, and I've been working with this guy for a long time. He's a really good designer, but the thing is, with my clients, Maybe I would say like 20 or 30% success rate because they always complain. Even though my professional eye says this is a good piece of work, but they complain. They don't like it. You know. It's like 20 to 30% rate success rate, right? Now I get <clears throat> Yeah, it works. So it's the piece of equipment is right. So I gave this guy another project and I blessed this specific project and I said, First try, first time, he doesn't spend a lot of time. He gets the idea really quick. And I said, Living Kingdom, he's the body of Christ because I work with the body of Christ. I love this. Yes. You, we are one. We are the body of Christ. The Living Kingdom will give you life in us. We'll let you do what you were created to do. So wisdom, understanding, knowledge. Understanding, you understand what the client wants. Now what I think he wants. What he wants. What he wants to do with his business. So, Living Kingdom, you work with us. I bless this project this guy is doing. So he put something together. He gave it to me. He's like, man, I'm not really pleased with it. You take a look. Don't send it to the client. I looked at it. It's like, it's not that bad. It's pretty good. But I'll send it to the client anyway because I bless the work of your hands. Well, and that guy got, OMG, amazing work. I really love it. That's it. That's what I was looking for. And we were like, cool. Sure. This is my account. Send the money. So bless the work of your hands. Everything you do, bless it. Frame it. The Lord God framed the worlds with his word. You use it the same way. We are life-giving spirit. Bless everything you do every single day. Bless it. Go to the MV. Bless the person you are talking to. Bless the line. Make it go really fast for you. Right? You know they got lines at the end. All right. 
Now let's say these words with this in mind. That was just a prelude for this. I know it took longer than this. It's going to take. <clears throat> we use our words. We frame this thing, right? So let's go. Father, we thank you for souls being saved. The sons of God revealed miracles and healing in abundance. Increase of the dominion of life. Grace and favor multiply to us. We give with joy for the kingdom. The mountain of lack is removed. We give and we receive. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Everything we got, belong, we got belongs to the Father. Every single penny, every single dollar we've got belongs to Him. It's His money. We are just stewards. We are faithful, righteous stewards of His funds. So you, we don't have a problem giving. We give because it's His funds and we are really good stewards of His funds. Thank you, Father. We bless every single tithing, every single sowing with a purpose, every single arm, everything that the body of Christ brings into the kingdom of God. Everything we bless it and we commend a hundredfold return really quickly. You return really quickly. Thank you, Father. The body of Christ will see that your promises are truth and they work on the ground. They are not just theory, but they are going to see with their own eyes on the ground. We bless every single thing we've got in the house of the Lord. Everything is blessed. Everything we use it for is such a blessing and it gets multiplied. Thank you, Father. We bless the body of Christ. We are givers just like you, Father. And we are aware that it's you. It's your funds. It's your money. They just go through us. And we are righteous, faithful stewards. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. All right. Uh, Brother Christian is going to come up next after Gerard gets this thing going. Good morning, morning, good morning, good morning. God is good, and all the time, praise you, Jesus, praise you. Complete gospel, complete gospel. Have you heard of that before? Please say yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. Um, if, you, um, if you remember, and you remember, because it's in you, the, at the very end of the complete gospel is like a list of things is that and Jesus was revealed in a, in a bodily form to them. Yeah? They saw Jesus. You remember that? No? Yes? Okay, good. Um, you probably heard, uh, we are still in January, everybody is talking about 2020. Oh man, what a nice matching of numbers, 2020, 2020, 2020. Well, here is part of the complete gospel. Yeah? John 2020. Did you look it up? I did. And here is what it says. And when he had said this, he showed them, he, Jesus, showed them his hands and his side. Then... The disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. 2020, complete gospel, complete gospel. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you that in this place, your presence is changing us from the inside. is touching everything that is yet to be aligned with your will, with your life, with who you are. 
And Father, we desire that. We want that. We want, we want to be changed. Father, we thank you that right now our mind is at peace. Peace that surpasses understanding is guarding, is guarding our mind. And we receive the living word of God. We receive it and we thank you, Lord, for it's your heart that we are in your presence. At your right hand, in Christ, oh Father, we thank you. We thank you. We are glad. We are glad. We are glad for we see the Lord. We see the Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. It's so good. So good. So when uh, Claudio was saying that he was praying towards that direction, um, I have this uh, regional geographical uh, kind of, I don't know, thinking because um, where I am, Claudio, what's on that side, the rest of the United States? You realize? East of us is the rest of you. You were praying for the body of Christ. Yes, you were. <laughs> Christ in you. Christ in you. He was, he was always right. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. So um, this morning, um, I would like us to quiet our mind and bring our souls into the oneness, oneness who Christ is in us and who we are in him. And right or left? I would like us to consider. So, mind you, we are in him. And we start looking uh, what is transformation has to do, what has to do with glory. And we are going to consider this as part of him. And him on the inside speaking. Amen. Amen. Um, <clears throat> of course, like always, we would like to know what has been put in our mind as we are growing in this reality. Yeah? We are growing in the world. The world is impacting us. The world is talking to us. The world is teaching us. And this is in the world about glory. Yeah? You can go online, Webster, dictionary, put glory. This is what we get. And it resonates with our human understanding, but we are different. But let's start here. And um, it says praise, honor, distinction, uh, renown, worshipful praise, something that secures praise, great beauty, distinguished quality, um, <clears throat> splendor, state of great, and so on and so on and so on. They keep on going. You know why? Because they don't understand. They don't understand. Yeah? But we have a heart of understanding. That's the heart that we receive by promise. We believe the promise that we, when we receive Jesus, we are getting a new heart. That's a heart of understanding. So I would like us to look in um, 2 Corinthians 3.18. We are here, we are here, and the veil is lifted. The veil is lifted. There is no veil. There is no confusion. We can see clearly. Amen? So, <clears throat> we all, with unveiled faces, beholding us in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. What are we looking at? The glory of the Lord. And as we look at that, as we take it in, it does something to our souls. 
it does something to the soul of a son. And what it does is transforming. Transforming from glory to glory in the same image. Image of who? Christ. Christ. From glory to glory by the Spirit of the Lord. I would like to look at the West translation, which says, from a degree of glory to another degree of glory. Which means what? It's only one glory. Well, there are degrees of the same glory. So as a son, I would like to know. Um, <clears throat> a while ago, we were taught and we were let know by, by the Spirit of God that to see is to know. Remember that. Yes? To see is to know. So we are looking. As we are looking, we are knowing. We are understanding. Things are opening up. We are being transformed. This is not true for everybody. And the reason is not true because we can, we, can glow, we can go in the Old Testament and look at a few examples. But we as sons, we look at Jesus, the author and the finisher. Which, when you, when you, when you think author and finisher, there is a process, yeah? And that process speaks of glory to glory. That's what's happening with us, in us, from glory to glory. And I would like to um, us to think that this is not true for everybody. Yeah? And let's, let's uh, scroll back a little bit in the Old Testament. The very first time when the glory of God is mentioned is on the Mount Sinai. Yeah? That's very explicit. And it says that it looked like a consuming fire. And people, yeah, the Israelites, looked at each other and said, we are in trouble. And then look at Moses. I'm looking at Claude. You go. <laughs> if it, there is somebody to be consumed, you told us to get out of Egypt. You said, you, you, now you go into that consuming fire. And I want us to remember how did Moses return? They could not look at him. They could not look at him. But people that have no renewing, no no born-again experience, when they look at the glory of God, they think, I'm going to die. It's going to consume me, and it's true. It is true. The glory of God will consume everything that has to do with sin, sinfulness, uh, unrighteousness is being consumed by the glory of God. But I want us to look into the heart of the Father and see that he always wanted us to look at the glory, to see the glory, even though those people could not touch it, those people could not enter into it. His heart was, I want you to see it, though. It was such that in the Old Testament, when they were grumbling, when they were complaining about Moses and Aaron and what you do, what you don't do, what we have, what we don't, the glory of God will show up and all the complaining stopped. See the glory? Ezekiel sees all that, that I don't know how you explain it, how anybody explains it, but he says that was 
the glory of God. That was how the glory of God looked. So all through the Old Testament, we see that God wanted, he desired us to see the glory of God. The only problem was nature. Our nature would not allow a correct, a righteous interaction with the glory of God. They were changed. They saw the glory time and time again. Yeah? And the fact that in the end it says, you saw the glory and didn't change. You are a stubborn people. God didn't want them to become stubborn. But there was the nature that could not change. So that's the glory of the Old Testament. When we come to the glory of the New Testament, we are looking at Jesus. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld what? His glory. His glory. We beheld His glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Son. But wait, there is good news. This only will become the first of many. Glory. Then <clears throat> Jesus Himself. When he prayed, now, I don't know how anybody thinks about Jesus praying. But he says that nobody's seen the Father except the Son who is with the Father. Nobody said that, ever. And this is the one who prays. To the Father, to the God of all creation. And he said, Father, the glory, this glory that they were beholding all this time, I give them. There is a purpose, there is a direction, there is a reason. For that glory to be on us, to be with us, to be inside, to be working something in us. And he says it. That they may be one. Be one. Do you see the oneness? Where the oneness is being designed, is being desired, is being thought about, is in between Jesus and the Father. Jesus and the Father are, are, counsel, are, are having a counseling session. Father, I want them to be one just as you and me are one. That's where it starts. And he said, for that, Father, I want them to experience glory. Because the glory that they are going to experience, they are going to see, is going to change something in them. Changed. Because we look with unveiled faces at his glory. Aren't you happy that you are being changed? Yes, this change goes on the outside. It's like a message that is being broadcasted, and the world gets scared. Oh, you tell me that if I come to Jesus, I am going to be changed? No, we are telling you, you come to Jesus, you are going to die. Yeah. Yeah. But we stay with them. And 
the message is love. 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 Rooted yeah, and grounded in love, you may comprehend, not by yourself, but with all the saints. See, again, that oneness that always comes out of the heart of Jesus. You may comprehend with all the saints dimensions of my love. And this is one of the dimensions. Glory. Glory that changes us from the inside. We are changed from glory to glory. Father, Jesus continues to pray. John 17 yeah, is just the most wonderful prayer. Father, I desire that where I am, they may be also. For what reason? Just so I'm not alone. Just so we can hang together. So they can see, behold my glory. You see? Because he knew as we behold his glory, we are going to be changed. Nobody can stay the same. Nobody who is born again. There are people, again, who are beholding his glory and there is no change. We bless them, but we are changed. And our change has to do with that oneness, that they may be one. They may be one. <clears throat> In the Old Testament, we can look at Jesus because we look at him, the author and the finisher. Yeah? We behold his glory. We are changed. So we look at Jesus in the Old Testament. And what do we see? What do we see? We see promises. We see prophetic passages in Isaiah, in Ezekiel, in Psalms, everywhere. But you see how they were looking ahead. They were looking at something that was not there, was not now for them, was ahead of them. Yeah? There were some instances where people are thinking, oh, this is the pre-incarnate. Jesus, you know, like the people that, the, the angels that visited Abraham, they say one of them was Jesus, the one that stood uh, with a sword in front of um, Joshua, they say that was a pre incarnate who cares, yeah, the fact is, the fact is that looking in the Old Testament, there is a glory, from glory to glory, so that's why we <clears throat> look at people saying that, hey, we are born again, we, have a, a new, we are in a new creation, we have the nature of the resurrection, uh, uh, resurrected Jesus in us, but let's uh, open the Old Testament. I'm not saying all scripture is good, all scripture is designed by the Father for instruction, for reproof, for guidance, for any. But in the Old Testament, there is a glory of Jesus and transforms you into what? Into, ah, I'm looking the one to come. For us, he is here. He is here. He is now. We look in the Old Testament as sons and we say, yes, Lord, you always wanted that. Yes, Lord, it's true that you designed, you know, a process in which we will look at him face to face and be changed into same image. Then we come into the New Testament and we have distinct distinct images of Jesus. We can look at Jesus ministering in, in the body. 
And we learn that he was a healer, he was a deliverer, he was a teacher, he did miracles, he raised people from the dead. Oh, glory! And it does something to us. It does something to us. We are changed into the glory of this word becoming flesh. We look at this and something starts growing, starts growing. We are changed into the same image. So much so that when we get so close to him and said, wow, glory. He said, yeah, but greater than this. Wow. Greater than this you will do. Huh? Then we look at him on the cross. We look at him on the cross. Glory. You see glory? People were mocking. Yeah? Schol scholarly people and uh, those religious people were thinking, this is the time to prove yourself. The world still says that. Yeah? This is the time to prove yourself. Prove yourself. Prove yourself. Yeah? But we see glory. And that glory changes, comes, and does a transformation in us. And we know we are forgiven. We know this is him. I was waiting for him to take all this pain away. To free me. We see the blood and we start understanding this is cleansing me. This is cleansing me. This is not any blood. This is the blood of Jesus. That cleanses me. Makes me new. Everywhere where the world has intended for me to Put something that will make me stumble, that will make me fall. The blood comes and uproots it and brings his image, brings eternal life. Thank you, Father, for the blood. Thank you, Father, for the blood. This is the blood that has sprinkled all things in heavenly places. When I show up in the heavenly places, I match. I am fitted to enter because the blood is all over me. It's the same blood and is alive. Is alive. Thank you, Father. Glory on the cross. I am changed. Glory to glory. Glory to glory. But glory to God, he didn't stay on the cross. He went into the tomb. And on the third day, exactly as he said, on the third day, he rose. He was resurrected. Glory, another glory. I look at the resurrected Jesus and I understand I am righteous. I am righteous. I have eternal life. I am. I am free of any any part of the scene, whether it was in my thinking, whether it was in my emotions, whether it was in my, in my will, I'm free from all of it because his resurrection. And I look at the glory of his resurrection. I am changed. I am changed. He died because of my sin. He was resurrected because of my 
righteousness. I look at resurrected Jesus and I am changed. And we sons, more than any other time, we look at Jesus who is seated at the right hand of the Father, the ascended Jesus. We were raised and pay attention closely to the words of our brother Paul. And as we were encouraged, think and see how he saw it. And we were made to sit. Did you make somebody do something ever? If you take care of little kids, you make, you make them do stuff. You made them be still. You made them go eat. You made them go change. You made them go take a nap. Your father made you, son, sit. He made you. I don't know whether you want it or not, but you do. Changed from glory to glory. We look at this ascended Jesus and a new, a new energy comes inside of us. New understanding. I am seated in Christ at the right hand of the Father. In Christ speaks of rest. In Christ speaks of finished works. I don't have to struggle. I don't have to uh, stretch my imagination and think really hard and study. I am in him. The beautiful, the most wonderful and amazing thing is at the same time, he is in me for power. I'm in rest and I have power. Do you know of anything better than that? I am in rest and I have power, glory. I am changed. I am ch I'm transformed to be one. To be one. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the revealed glory. Thank you, Lord, that with unveiled faces, we see, we see your glory. We are transformed from glory to glory. Thank you, Lord. We embraced it with all we are, with all we have, because it's you. It's you. Is your very nature. My nature is changed from glory to glory. And we love it. We love it. Thank you, Father. Glory to glory. Glory to glory. We have been growing as sons for quite a few years, and here locally, a few of us. Power is something everybody in the world looks for. And we've learned that the power of death, which is in the natural man, everything goes to death, and that's the power of the world. Whatever they do, it just still goes to death. But as we've gone from glory to glory, he's revealing to us more and more of our power that he's given to us in our new nature. And that new nature is eternal life. And here in this world, eternal life cannot appear. It can't exist. It can't manifest without ex exhibiting power. Jesus, when he was here, he talked about the the kingdom of God is among you. 
and he would he did all of these signs and wonders right out of his own nature the nature of eternal life that was in him now we see these promises we see these realities that are in the lord and we begin to just believe them we have them okay. little kid sees his older brothers and sisters and kids in the in the neighborhood riding the bicycle and they believe that they can do it too you were that little kid and now you know you could be 50 years old or 10 years old you know whatever you old you are you can ride that bicycle now because you believed at the time you believed you couldn't do anything except to try try so that's what we do when we exercise ourselves in power when we exercise ourselves in power for healing so now i ask you to stand up on your feet we're going to exercise releasing the power of our nature the eternal life that's in us and we're going to send it to the earth Releasing it into the earth, out through our soul, out through our body, into the earth, into the souls. Now listen carefully, into the souls of every believer, every true believer that Jesus, God knew before the foundation of the universe, and he put that seed of eternal life in their hearts, and every true believer, and we're going to release power to bring forth the increase in other words, with God, all things are possible. Well, definitely we're with him. Okay? And so we just, we look to the end of the, what the faith is. It brings forth what is hoped for. Now there's uh, seeds that are in every believer on the planet. The Holy Spirit showed me this around the world. It's in every believer. Not every believer has the seeds of sonship in the sense where they're increasing in them. Not every believer has, has the fact of, of speaking in tongues or even being baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's, it's just somehow God never quickened that seed in them. But as sons, he's shown us, okay, you have the power, son. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with the power? Well, we saw... 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, and up till just now, a continual increase of the word of God pertaining to sonship of the believer. We're seeing a harvest of it now in Africa and in India and in Europe where, that we've Never been before on the earth. Never been before on the earth. Never. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to increase a specific word. And there's several words in this, in this topic. And the word is the rapture of the church. The leaving of the body of Christ. Leaving the earth. Going to the marriage supper of the Lamb. You can read all about it in all kinds of places in the scripture. It's like it says in there in one place in, in 2 Thessalonians that the devil, the Antichrist, cannot be revealed until the Holy Spirit leaves the earth. And when the Holy Spirit leaves the earth, then that whole crazy time happens. The Antichrist shows up and all kinds of chaos happens because we're gone. Because, see, the Holy Spirit's not leaving without us. He came to get us. He's the big net that pulled us all out. So we're going to release this life that you have in use. Now you say, well, I don't know. How do I feel? How do I do it? Don't, don't worry about it. Just believe. That's your nature, to be able to speak words. We, we give a direction with our mind, which is toward that specific seed. Just like we've done for the last several years toward the specific seed of popping sons into glory. And we're seeing that harvest today. Right? And so now let's just do that together. Father, we just release this life out of our nature. We give a direction with our mind. Into the earth, into the soul of every believer. 
for all of the word of the rapture of the church, all that pertains to us leaving the earth. Oh, we command you seeds to be increased. We command you to be increased. I thank you, Father, you watch over your word to perform it as you are releasing this life of increase through your sons. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, as the Holy Spirit reminds you this week, Remind you about the rapture of the church. Then that means you are to stop right then and release some increase to the seed. It's going into your own soul. It's going into everywhere else the Holy Spirit wants to send it. This is very real, folks. This is, you know, if I'd have told, uh, I was talking to Val, I said, if I would have told you, or if I would have told probably any of you years ago, he said, you know, something's going to happen to you. Something's going to happen to you, Chrissy. Something's going to happen to you that you have no idea about. You have no way of knowing. You have no experience about it. It's just going to happen to you, and all of a sudden, your entire life's going to change. Well, that's what coming into sonship does. It's the same thing that happened when God, oh, here I go. <laughs> when God said, Noah... Build me an ark. All of those people. Nobody had an idea. They didn't know what an ark was. What's a boat? They don't know what a boat was. I'm going to build an ark. Oh, you're nuts. You're crazy. Nobody had an idea. So far out of the box. And so Jesus said, the end will come as the days of Noah. And that's what he was talking about. So out of the box that nobody can even get a clue of what it is. Well, in the moment, in a twinkling an eye, I'm out of here, and I have no clue what that's like, how that's going to happen, what, what, what. Can I do anything about it? No. You don't even have to believe. If you're part of God's life, he's going to do it in you anyway. Hallelujah. So we don't have to make a doctrine out of it. I mean, they fight all over the world about doctrines about the rapture and all that kind of stuff. Hey, man, God's going to do it. Just as sure as you have come into sonship, God's going to take us off this planet. Hallelujah. So let's lift up a, a tithe of the spiritual increase. Of all of this great word we just heard, this is really good, brother. I really appreciate you coming and sharing this because it, it shows us direction. It ministers to us the reality of what God is doing with us. So let's lift up a tie. Say these words with me. Father, Father I, am I am a son in your kingdom. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus you're my high priest. I bring you a tithe of the increase of your life in me today. Oh, I worship him. Oh, I worship Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, what a great day. What a great day. Hallelujah. Every day is a new day. A new day. Praise you, Lord. I have one more thing here for, for those of you online. We've had several people. Are we still on? Oh, we've had several people that uh, over the last couple of months have had some difficulty uh, uh, sending in donations and sending their tithe. Uh, the world banking system is coming down on, on different ways in which people transfer money. But one thing they haven't done is the bank to bank. So we are going to put up our, our bank account number and how to send uh, the money through from your bank account directly to our bank account. So we'll get that online for you and get that straightened out. God bless you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We'll talk to you next week.